is convening at 9.41 a.m. on October 7, 2022 at the Health Licensing Office in Salem, Oregon by telephone conference call. I will now call roll. Jacob Espinosa, aye. Sarah Fitzpatrick. Here. Pablo Herrera Fuentes. Aye. Michael Erickson. Aye. Members, when you wish to speak, please state your last name for the record. Board members are asked to not use the chat feature during meetings. Public members wishing to speak must first sign in on the roster sheet available. For public members calling in on the public phone, please email April Fleming at april.fleming at dhsoha.state.or.us and provide your first and last name. Public and interested parties feedback may be heard during the public interested parties feedback period if indicated on the agenda. Everyone is asked to use appropriate language, manners, and protocols when conducting board business. The meeting is called to order. All right, good morning, everybody. Um, this is Bob. So, um, Jacob, I would like to suggest we amend the agenda and take number two off since uh, Lori's not here and um, then move forward. Can we have a motion for that revised agenda? I make a move. This is Fitzpatrick. I make a motion to um, amend the agenda. Thank you very much. And I'll second it. Thank you. A motion has been made. I'll call roll. Jacob Espinosa, aye. Sarah Fitzpatrick. Aye. Pablo Herrera Fuentes. Aye. Michael Erickson. Aye. Right. The modified agenda has been approved. All right, this is Bob again. Um, so items for board action. Uh, the first item on the agenda is well, we board the approval. The next item is approval of meeting dates. Um, currently, it looks like we're shooting for March 17, June 23 and October 20 of 2023. So if I can get board members to take a look at calendars and we need a motion to approve. All right. Hopefully you all looked at that those meetings. Did someone like to make a motion to approve those dates? Yeah, this is Aero Fuentes. I move to approve those dates. Okay, second. This is Erickson. I will second those dates. Okay, very good. A motion has been set, uh, has been made. I'll call roll. Jacob Espinosa. Aye. Sarah Fitzpatrick. Aye. Pablo Herrera Fuentes. Aye. Michael Erickson. Aye. Very good. Those dates have been approved for next year. OK, um, this is Bob again. The next item for board action is the 2023 chair and vice chair. And so. It looks like. Um, Jacob. You're good through 2024, February of 24, when you're um, when you expire, your term expires, and you cannot reappoint. And Sarah, hers expires, her first term expires December 16 of this year, and she can reappoint. So, what were those dates? So um, there's options. Uh, the board can uh, vote to keep um, the chair and vice chair status quo as is, or um, if somebody wants to change, if somebody wants to be the chair or somebody else wants to be the vice chair, you can uh, make nominations. 
This is Espinosa. I will say uh, I appreciate being on the board as this chair. I, I can go either way. So whatever the board decides, I have no leanings whatsoever. This is Fitzpatrick. I'm fine with continuing how we're currently set up. This is Erickson. I'm also fine with the setup we have right now. This is Sarah Fuentes and same thing here. OK, um, this is Bob, so I need uh, someone other than uh, so we're going to do two or maybe we can do it in one. Um, we'll need a motion to um, keep Jacob as the chair and Sarah as the vice chair. This is Erickson. I'll make a motion to keep Jacob as the chair and uh, Sarah Fitzpatrick as the vice chair. And this is Sarah Fuentes, and I second that motion. Okay, very good. A motion has been called for the appointments of the chair and the vice chair. I'll now call roll. Uh, Jacob Espinosa, aye. Sarah Fitzpatrick, aye. Pablo Herrera Fuentes, aye. Michael Erickson, aye. Okay, motion has been passed. We have the appointments for next year. Okay. This is Bob again. Um, so next on the agenda is reports. Uh, the director's report. Um, I'll start off with um, letting everybody know about some changes here. Uh, the office you may or may not be aware. Uh, Sylvie has left HLO and gone to sunnier, warmer parts of this country. <laughs> and uh, um, public health has made me the interim director here at HLO and with that move we've made Trampas Shuck the uh, interim regulatory operations manager in charge of investigations and the inspections. Also um, as I read earlier um, the chair Jacob Espinoza his second full term expires February 29 of 24 and he's unable to reappoint Mark Easby's uh, first full term expires 11-24-23. He may reappoint. Michael Erickson, your first full term expires May 31 of 25, and you also can reappoint. Sarah, as we had discussed, hers expires uh, December 16, 2022, and she can reappoint. Um, Lori Freemark is a new board member. Uh, respiratory care practitioner and uh, you know she's just starting but her first full term ends November 30, 2023. Uh, Dr. LaFour um, cannot reappoint but he's serving until replaced when he's available and then a public public member um, Pablo Herrera Fuentes his first full term is up uh, November 24 of 23 and he too can reappoint. Any questions about that? OK, moving no on. Questions. Thank you. Moving on. Um, so we're heading into legislative season and we've been working on a bill that may have impact um, with this board in as much as this is a temporary staffing agency, uh, Senate Bill 1549, which is um, going to cap um pay for temporary well it's two it's twofold one is uh temporary staffing agencies will have to register um with hlo there there's not a board um intended at this point and um what that also entails is a capping of traveling medical professionals um and how much um, the temporary staffing agencies can charge um, hospitals, nursing homes, and the like. Uh, there's a work group um, working 
um, with the health authority and they have to um, put a report to the legislature at the end of the year this year um, for review and then that may or may not change how the bill um, is if it's completed i mean it could be anything from we're moving on to with the plans or rewrite the bill or um, just let it go i have no idea what uh, what the outcome of that's going to be any questions with any of that all right so nope. for those of you looking at your computers um, i'm going to scroll down to The licensing and statistical license licensing and fiscal statistical reports. That's a mouthful. Um, and that is slide 11 of 26. And on down to slide 13 to the licenses issued. Um, since everybody's a veteran on the board right now, is there any concerns or any discussion with the statistics that are between slide 13 and down to the end, which is slide 19. Do we have a comparison? This is just gonna say, uh, do we have comparisons of like what our numbers were in 2019? Because I know we had quite a bit of a bump in licensees going up, right? when the pandemic started sure. 2020, 2021. And I don't know if we're kind of regressing back to the mean in 2022. Right, so um, so as you see on slide 13, fiscal year 20 um, encompasses part of the latter half of 2019, starting July 1 of 2019, going through mm, June okay. 30. Um, and in that quarter, you, there was, we issued um, 11, 10-year licenses, and then in quarter four, another five. So it looks like it's been somewhat up and down with the temporary licensure. Yeah. And then um, with those, the next slide, um, the for licenses renewed, um, looks like for the most part, everybody's uh, still renewing um, via paper. And uh, slide 15, polysom, same, mostly done with paper or by paper. What's with the upticks on, is it Q2 of 2020, Q2 of 2021? Is that because uh, of the graduations happening like in May? Are we looking yeah. at slide 15 or? Uh, it's slide 15, yes. Those are renewals. Tina, did I hear you get on there? Yeah, I haven't had, I don't have the materials pulled up, but a lot of them do come in in May and June graduating from school. Okay, slide 16 um, is uh, active license by age and gender. The female being predominant. Polysom in slide 17 by age and gender again. Um, it looks like it might be close to a break even. 
And then on slide 18 are your licensing trends. So it looks like uh, polysom's pretty stag static um, in respiratory therapists. Looks like it, it's a continuing um, growth. Uh, hey, um, I think on slide 18, um, Jacob may answer your question with um, the provisional COVID and temporary license graphs. Yeah. All right, slide 19 is um, the exams. Slide the pass fail rates. Any questions on any of that? Looks like um, this board does pretty well in passing. Slide 20 are your financials. So you probably have a question. Um, how do we go get down to from 54 in 2020 to 108 in 21 and 109,000? In the red in 22, all it takes is one good case. And we had one for this board. Um, and so that that could eat up a, a lot of money. But as of uh, the current, we are slowly making our way out of the red and into the black. Shared assessments, they did not provide me um, a spread of where we were previously, but uh, the shared assessment is three, almost three and a quarter percent and the small board is 20%. Any questions on any of that? And I apologize for the lack of a spreadsheet for your financials uh, for the pooled expenditures and allocation. No, not for that. I, uh, I do have something to add for number seven, the other board business, so just kind of remind me about it. Okay. We can bring it up. Yeah. All right, so moving on to slide 21 is the regulatory report. Trampas. Hello, everyone. Can you hear me? That's fine. OK. Um, yeah, so as you can see, we've got a couple of uh, we got three bienniums showing on this report. We still got a couple of cases um, uh, kind of hanging on from that that 2019 biennium. I suspect that those will be well, I know one of them is actually um, in the process, and I think the other one um, uh, is something that is going to get some focus to get to get off of there. Uh, we've got one case that's coming to you guys for consideration uh, in um, uh, executive session, but um, otherwise, I think things are are um, are uh, going the way they should for the most part, other than getting a couple of those old ones off of the books. Um, did anybody have any questions about these or? No. No. OK. All right, public and interested parties. I don't know if we have somebody on the phone or not. Hi, good morning. This is Bob at HLO. Is there anybody on the public phone line? All right, and there's nobody on the public phone line, so we don't have to do that. All right, executive session. All right, let me read that script. Please. The Respiratory Therapist and Polysomographic Technologist Licensing Board will now meet in executive session pursuant to ORS as ORS 192.660. 2F and ORS 676.595 for the purpose of considering inform information exempt from the public disclosure 
at 10.01 a.m. on October 7, 2022. Representatives of the news media shall be allowed to attend the executive session by conference call and will be provided further call-in instructions shortly. Public phone line will be muted for the duration of the executive session. Are there any representatives of the news media on the public phone line? There are not. Okay, recognizing there's no news media in attendance, the public phone line will be muted for the duration of the executive session. We will return to open session before taking any final action or making any final decision. We are now in executive session. Okay, 